Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are looking at x, y, z there from string 2, and this is the Python solution. The problem states return true if the given string contains an appearance of x, y, z where x, y, z is not directly preceded by a period. So x, x, y, z counts, but x dot x, y, z does not. And we can see these examples here. This first case, we have an x, y, z there, so we return true. We have a dot x, y, z, we return false, because that doesn't count. And here we have an x, y, z, so we return true. Now what they don't put in this situation is in this, these test cases where I have a dot x, y, z, and then an x, y, z somewhere else. And in that case, it will return true. So I have three approaches here. Um, the first two approaches just take advantage of built-in methods, and they're kind of fun. We can do these in one-liners. Um, and then the third approach uses loops. And it's really important to be comfortable looping through a string or a list or an array. It's a fundamental skill, and I can't stress that enough for young programmers who are learning. So the approach one, what we do is, well, we have this nice instance method for strings called count. And what this will do is return the number, it will return the number of times that a specific substring appears. So if I take the count of all the XYZs, that's going to include both XYZ and the situations that are dot XYZ. And then if I subtract that from all the situations that are dot XYZ, so I count all of those, I should get a value greater than one if there's at least one case that is just dot XYZ. So if I hit go, then we see that works well. And let's just, just for clarification, let's just take this case here and just let me talk this through. We'll just comp this out. So in this case, if I count the number of XYZs, I'm going to get one because there's an XYZ there, and I'm going to get two because there's an XYZ here. But if then I minus the, the number of dot XYZs, I get one. So what I get is two minus one gives me one. And that's greater than zero, so that's good. And watch, I can just return that, and you'll see it there. So if I hit go, see how all the cases that are supposed to be true, I get a value greater than zero. Oh, greater than zero, pardon me. There we go. Okay, let's look at our second case. The second way that we kind of approach this is we use this built-in method called find um, and replace. Now, my first approach was this, and I'm just going to run my first approach and explain to you why it's wrong. And so what I thought was, well, I can find the number of times that we get an XYZ. So what does this do? Find returns the, the index of the first instance of that substring. And if that's greater than or equal to zero, and then I thought, well, also, and if I find the dot XYZ and I get negative one, that means there's no dot XYZ, then it must be there. And I hit go, and I notice that I had these cases that are wrong. And I can see why this case is wrong here, because if I find the XYZ, I'm going to get the index value here, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to get, and, well, it turns out this has a dot XYZ. And this is that case I was talking about where there's a dot XYZ and an XYZ. So how did I solve that? Well, what I thought I could do was I could take this, I took this string here and I pasted it. I could replace all the dot XYZs with an empty string, and that's going to collapse it. So now all the dot XYZs are gone, and then all I do is I find to make sure that I get at least one case of XYZ. And that's this example here. And there it is. So I replace all the dot XYZs with an empty string that collapses the string. And then I take that and I find the XYZ. And as long as it's greater than or equal to zero, I have one case. This is a good example of stringing together those string calls. So we, you know, we start here and we take str, then we replace it, and we take the result of that, and then we find it. Nice little skill to develop. All right, approach three is um, probably, you know, for a young beginning programmer, the most important approach to get comfortable with, and that is using a loop and searching for a substring using a loop. And what we do here is the first thing I notice is that this is a problem where I can exit and stop as soon as I find one XYZ. So if we look at the case here, we see that we have an XYZ right there. I can stop. I don't need to look at the rest of the string. And that means I'm going to have a return statement inside my loop somewhere. What I do here is I take this string and I think about there's a, an example string there. And I'm going to look at four characters at a time. I'm going to look at these three characters and say, are you XYZ? And if that's true, then I'm going to check the one before it and say, are you not a dot? And if that's the case, I can return true. And then I is going to circulate through. And so I'm going to start, there's my first case I want to check. In this case, so I is equivalent to 1 in that case. And so I set my I to 1 on my loop. And I'm going to go through to the end. And I see here in this case, I is 7. 
If this has a length of 10, it's going to be the length minus 2. And so that helps me set up my loop parameters. So now if I hit go, it works. So what happens is I have this check and I say, okay, let's just check that very first case. Because notice this loop starts, this loop starts right there. So what happens is that, you know, if I don't have this here, if I take this if statement here and I comment that it and I hit go, you'll notice that it works everywhere. And the reason why it worked everywhere was because I'd left this previous example uncommented. There you go. So I had to comment this out. So let's come back down here. And notice if I take this if statement out, it doesn't work everywhere. And that's because I'm ignoring the first case. So I start off with this if statement and I say, okay, as long as the length of this is greater than or equal to 3 and um, I take the substring from 0 to 3 is x, y, z, I can return true. Again, this isn't necessary because we're using that substring notation in Python, and Python won't crash if it's less than 3, but again, it's a good habit to get into that. And then I run through my loop. I start at i, I take the string at i and i plus 3 to get x, y, z, and I check that the, the character before it is not equal to a period. I hit go, it works fine. Now I want to point out one last thing before I wrap up. If I put 0 here and I hit go, this works. But I want you to be really cautious here. And actually, this caused me for a pause for a second, because I said, why does it work? We've talked about in earlier videos that if I take an individual character and I try and access an index that isn't there, the program won't run. And then I remembered this little kind of great feature of Python, is that if I do str and I put in a negative index value, it actually goes from the end of the string. So even though this works, um, I have a feeling that there's a test case that this would fail. So I really want to stress this idea that you're going to start that at index 1, and this will also translate a lot nicer to other languages. I hope this video helped, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Remember, you can find all my solutions with comments on my repo in the comment section below. Have a great day.